you must have seen dozens, if not hundreds, of instruments like this, bigger, smaller, and so on. What makes the powder organ, this one, so really special? I think the main thing about this organ is that uh, it remains very much in the condition in which it was built. Alterations have been made to it, but all the uh, early material remains pretty well intact. In a curious way, it's benefited, therefore, from neglect, hasn't it? I mean, people haven't improved, in inverted commas, they haven't improved it, they've left it as it is. Yes, this is something we've found quite a lot, particularly in small country parish churches and, indeed, in private places where, uh, for one reason or another, there hasn't been the interest or the finance or other reasons to change organs. It's these organs uh, which remain in very... Uh, original condition. They may need repair, as indeed this one does, but nevertheless uh, the material is there to be restored. Having played it myself, I know that it needs things doing to it. It's quite a white knuckle ride as I've described it to, to get through a concert. Um, very beautiful sound, but just really rather frightening to try and play. So from your point of view, what needs doing to it? I think the main thing is that the sound boards which supply air to the pipes uh, need to be completely taken apart and repaired because it's that which then causes pipes to go out of tune, not receive the appropriate amount of wind uh, and therefore change their pitch and indeed to some extent their uh, timbre. And I think that uh, that would be one of the key elements here. The pipes themselves are in relatively good condition, however there have been one or two small modifications which I think will be important to correct. Principal sound producing parts of the pipes have remained intact and that, that is so important because once you start taking a pipe apart to uh, repair or replace things which have been altered then there's no way that you can be sure of getting back to the original uh, type of sound that the pipe was meant to produce. From the player's point of view though, of course, it's, it's the connection between the keyboard, pedal board and the pipe, which is what I feel under my fingers. What needs doing as far as that's concerned? Well, obviously, with an organ of this age, uh, there's been a certain amount of wear and tear of the mechanism, and, uh, but this is a, a relatively simple procedure, simply to uh, take up this play, which has uh, evolved over the years, and the other thing is to make sure that everything remains as stable as possible within the in instrument and isn't unduly affected by small changes in temperature and humidity. So this is something which is important in any restoration of any organ really because unless the mechanics and the wind system which supplies air to the pipes are intact then uh, the organ will never be in particularly good condition. Those are the two key things. The thing that's really interesting is that the organ has already had a lot of work done to it in the middle of the 19th century, hasn't it? It had the upper manual added and the pedals added. How do you decide as a restorer and as a, a carer of old instruments, how do you decide how far back to go to, uh, in the restoration? Should we scrap all the 19th century editions and go back to Bryce Seed's original conception? I think the key to any uh, successful restoration project is to do as much research as possible, uh, looking into records and seeing uh, how accurately one can determine at what period and ideally which builder or person uh, was involved in the alterations which took place. And that will help uh, put uh, the level of importance on these alterations uh, if, for example, it was uh, a, uh, an amateur person making changes, then they probably were not appropriately done. If, on the other hand, it was a well-known organ builder who um, did work in a purely professional way, then I think that work can be considered to be valid. This organ uh, remains very much as the only example of Bryce Seed's work, and therefore it's particularly important that nothing is done to it the which uh, will alter its original features. And I think that can be said to be the case here. As you say, additions have been made, and I think at each stage one needs to understand who made them, why they were made, and in what way they might influence the complete organ. And in a sense, of course, we're quite fortunate with this organ, aren't we? Because the additions and the Bryce Seed originals are quite clearly identifiable and differentiated 
that's to say the great, the lower manual, the great organ, is essentially as, as Seed intended it, and then the upper manual and the pedals are the additions. It's not as if they've all got mixed up together. No, uh, there's lots of evidence uh, which one can see at the console here, for example, and also, of course, inside the organ to show what alter alterations were made. For example, these stop labels, uh, there are some stops which were changed and some which were added, and by looking at the uh, way the stop labels are made, one can see quite clearly that they differ from the original labels. Also, the shape of the keys of the top keyboard uh, are slightly different from those of the lower keyboard, and even the top keyboard has had a slight alteration made. It originally started at F, tenor F, and then was extended down to C. And if you look at the first uh, five keys, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, you can see that they are slightly different from the keys which continue beyond that. So there are all sorts of little signs there, and this is the sort of thing that one looks for as a restorer to determine what happened to the organ and roughly when and what significance it has to the instrument as a whole. So are there quite a few Bryce Seed organs around? I mean, he was a distinguished builder in the Bristol southwest area, wasn't he? Yes, indeed. No, there are very few. In fact, uh, there are a few um, pipes in various organs, one in Bodmin, I believe, and uh, one or two others, but uh, no organ is anywhere near as complete as this instrument is as an example of Bryce Seed's work. So, in that sense, the instrument's unique? Yes, it is completely unique because it is the only remaining example uh, where there's a virtually complete organ as built by Bryce Seed. When the organ is restored, will it be necessary to take it completely away from here, uh, or will it be done on site? No, uh, if there are just simple repairs which are needed, then of course work can be done on site. But in a case like this, where all the major elements of the organ need to be worked through and uh, restored properly, the only way you can do that in a structured way is to do it in a workshop where you have uh, facilities for doing all this work. Now, of course, originally an organ like this would be pumped by hand. And I can, I can still remember when my father was an organist, uh, he used to let me play, but I was by myself and I had to run round to the side, pump <laughs> it up and then rush back and play about five bars mm -hmm. and then it ran out of wind. And indeed at the side you can still see the uh, handle that used to be used for pumping up the bellows. But it has now got an electric motor. It really doesn't make any difference. I mean, if anything, that is a genuine improvement because it keeps a stable supply of wind. Well, I think, again, the important thing in an organ of this period is to keep the original system as well as any ancillary system because uh, one doesn't want to take away an, something which is characteristic to this period of organ and then one can have a choice whether still to hand pump it or to use a modern blower. To produce it.